left of me. Joke is to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle of you. Yes, I What's up, Degenerate Nation? Welcome to Stuck with Colin. I'm stuck in with me as always is Colin Wilson. He's stuck with me. I'm stuck with him. We're all still stuck inside, so you're stuck with us. Uh, what's going on, Colin? You got a solo solo round in today? Solo round of golf, but there are, I mean, there's just a new rule. There's, there's new etiquette. There's new, there was foam in the bottom of the cup. Uh, you can't touch the flag stick. Um, every, I, I'm going to say this right now. Do you know one business that's not hurting these days? Golf courses, slam pack, uh, pace of play, frenetic. Uh, we're talking everybody is out there golfing and on a conference call at the same time. I couldn't drive within 15 feet of anybody and heard, yeah, yeah, ship that. Yeah, yeah, book that. Like there was so much business being conducted while everybody stayed so far away from each other. And I mean, it was, it was amazing to see like everybody's on spring break, even adults are on spring break and, and, and the, the golf course was slammed. It was, I, I shouldn't be surprised. Well, if you're a college age kid, don't go on spring break. Uh, if you can, <laughs> um, we, today we're going to talk about, uh, if you haven't seen it, I put my bad beats bracket out. There's a college football region, an NFL region, a hoops region, and then an other sports region. We'll go through one a day, and then we'll talk about our final four. We still have the ultimate college football best team ever bracket to get to. I saw you mentioning the two best teams ever in your eyes. I said, yeah. oh, well, Miami. So we'll get to that. Um, but today we're going to spend time going through the college football region, which is going to be fun. Um, we'll also mention a couple other games that didn't make it. Um, but before that, um, you know, you went golfing. It's important to get outside, even just walk around. And like I said last yeah. week's show, if you need someone to talk to, reach out to people. See if they're doing okay. If you need someone to talk to, don't be shy about reaching out. And if you need someone, I'm, I'm there to talk. Um, some, some news. Uh, Washington legalized sports betting, and it's amazing, the power. It's kind of the, that tribal casinos have. Only in tribal casinos, no mobile. You can't bet on Washington teams. I mean, mm-hmm. why even do it? And it's sad because of how hard Washington's been hit by the coronavirus. Not only, you know, all the, the deaths and sickness, but the, their economy has suffered as a result. The tax revenue that you could have gotten from legalizing sports betting the right way would have been such a huge bump um, for Washington State. I fear that the same thing, and it's, like I said, it's sort of karmic justice with the, the, how much power the tribal casinos have, but you feel bad for the people of Washington. I think the same thing is going to happen with Florida and the amount of power that the tribal casinos wield there. Um, but I was disappointed to see that, but not surprised. Um, and then before we get to the bracket, I guess we have to talk about shows and what we're doing. So I'm getting a little better in MLB. Well, first of all, Ozark comes out this weekend. So if you want to binge season one, season one and two, you'll have season three up on Netflix. Um, I've watched this show, Dirty Money. There's a couple of good episodes. That's on Netflix. Season two came out. None of them are related. It's kind of like a docu uh, series uh, about different topics of corruption. Um, and then a lot of people are talking about this Tiger King, which I haven't seen. I was yeah. building the bracket and heard my girl like screaming like, oh my God, what is, what's going on? Ha- have you seen that? And what else are, uh, have you been watching and or playing? Well, let's put it this way. My Twitter timeline hates it. And my Facebook pull down team. I don't even, I don't even log into it. They love it. So that tells me it's garbage. So <laughs> when my Facebook likes something and my Twitter hates it, that means that it's garbage and then flip it for the opposite. When Twitter likes it, it's usually pretty good. Uh, so I haven't watched it. It's on the list. Uh, you know, I need to, I, I was deep diving into our studio and making some pretty graphs and college football stuff, some, some good stuff that we can use for content later in the year. So I really took a break from TV for the last two days, but it, it's on the list. Yeah. Uh, we, by the way, I, yeah, when we talk about the college football bracket, we'll also talk about the what what the cancellation of like spring and all of this means to betting and and uh, we'll we'll talk about some of that stuff and you know if this goes into the summer, how and what what is the impact to certain teams and there's going to be a lot of important work that's done as a result of like conditioning and and returning production. I think it will be even more important this year, but mm-hmm. that's secondary let's just get through this first and if you if you don't have enough reason to take this serious now if you're young if you don't take it serious now we won't have fucking football um 
So that's that's all I'll say there. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if, yeah, if, I don't. I don't. If, I, if putting other people's lives in danger doesn't do it for you, not football. I hopefully I, that maybe speaks to you. I I don't do political Twitter, and I don't get you know get into politics at all. But sometimes I just want to do an all caps tweet that says "Stay the fuck home" because you're gonna mess up our football season. And I mean, I know March Madness is great, and NBA is great, and MLB is great. But the the revenue, the money, everything associated with NFL and college football, we all need it badly. I mean, businesses need it. The sporting yeah. fan, the fans need it. The betters need it. We all need football. So please lock yourself down. Let's get over this. Let's let's find our curve. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, MLB the show. I'm up to like I I love. I haven't played a video game in like ten years. As I said, I love this dynamic difficulty thing. Yeah. Where it like it gets harder as you get the, better. Yeah. So I'm up to like veteran plus. Um, I got up to all star plus in pitching, and I got lit up for like 18 yes. runs and dropped all the way down. Uh, and I was a fucking rude awakening. Um, so, but I saw, but it's the computer. Is that a good gauge for if I can play? If I'm ready to play someone now? I don't. I don't know. Um, <sighs> but I'm gonna have to play you soon. After we get off this, you're gonna have to tell me how to do it. I don't know how to go online or find my username or what i'm an old man when it it's comes pretty to easy to find your username on the playstation network let me just dangle that out there for everybody because it's the same as your twitter i found you and sent an invite but yeah oh, you I, did I don't think you know yeah i don't think you know how that works yet so i don't um yeah but uh right. no you're but yeah, right I think, though i think the next step or the, one of the next two episodes um i'll be ready to accept in the next couple of days i'll accept some uh I'll accept some invites and play some games from, from, Oh, I'll obviously play you a bunch, but uh, some random yeah. people as well. And uh, you guys can beat my ass and I'll for a little bit of money and I can help you, out. You need so. to, you'll need to practice a ton on your base running skills. So I play online against other people, probably a 13 year old that whipped me this morning, but wait, can I do know, like auto base running on when I play someone or no? <laughs> Is that allowed uh, or you, no? You can like, use, I don't like, know how the settings work. Does everyone have to agree in the same settings? Is well, that how it you works? You have to use the L stick, point at it, and choose the right button. But, uh, yeah, you know, you not everybody has the same settings. Um, yeah, so, but I'm saying, can you use, like, auto fielding and an auto base running? Or I don't, do you have to I, – I didn't use auto fielding when I was throwing, so. No, but I'm know. saying, how do you – the settings, like, do you play on – like the, the the difficulty level and like right. the, the directional hitting or not, it's just up to that person. Right. Or do you think I think it agree? is. A, yeah. Yeah. I, no, I think it's up to your own settings because I haven't changed mine. Let's put it that way. It hasn't made me change the way that I throw to first base. Like that whole, you know, it's tough. Like when you field a ball an infield ground ball, not only do you have to pick the right base, but sometimes the R2 comes up and you got to put the R2 centered on the first baseman and then let it fly. And that doesn't come up when I play online. So, yeah, when I first started playing on beginner, which is way too easy because I was dominating. I was sending you screenshots. Right. I was winning like uh, – I was throwing like – you know, Scherzer would have like a complete game shutout with 19 strikeouts, but I would have like seven errors from throwing to first base. Um, right. So – And that, that's um, the fun part about the pitching is like you can sit there and paint the corners in double A. You can sit there and paint the corners like you're Greg Maddox, like from the early 90s, and then you get the call up to the show, up to the, up to the MLB ranks, and you'll hit the four-seam fastball down the middle – and it ends up being in the guy or it's in the dirt. Like your control goes to shit once you get called up. Yep. All right. Um, let's, let's talk about this college football region, which is really fun. Um, I, yeah. I first want to mention two games that didn't make it. There was two playing games, which I did in every region. Uh, FIU Toledo lost out in a coin flip playing game to La Tech FIU for the 16 seed. La Tech FIU. And by the way, I was on 12 or 13 of the wrong side of these college football ones. I'm not on the right side of any. Um, it's unbelievable. I was on the right side of some other ones, but not college football. But La Tech FIU, the FIU Toledo total was that bowl game where there was like a Hail Mary and like 28 mile an hour wins. Um, and it went over with no, as time expired, a meaningless touchdown. The La that Tech was a, FIU. Wasn't that a Peter's dime drop in the back of the end zone that sent that thing yep. over, if I remember right, from a 50, from yep. like the 50 yard line? And I think you had like an a total really early on and it lost right i had i had a 10 point window yeah i had like a 10 point window like i hit it i hit yeah. the under and then it went down what 12 points and then hit the over and didn't matter um and yeah lots and then lots heck fiu which i was on fiu that's when fiu had an onside kick with like 10 seconds left and uh La to Tech returned it for a touchdown yeah, this has uh, to stop this shit has to but, stop. It's, it's coming from skip holtz 
Yeah. <laughs> and the one that didn't make that lost another coin flip for a six seed was UNC NC State from 2012. If you've never seen this game, it's wild. So NC State was catching seven and a half. They're up 10, um, 35-25. And no, no, this isn't the playing game. This is the game I actually forgot about and remembered right after I made the bracket. Um, but uh, and it should be it should have been in there. NC State plus seven and a half, down 35-25, going into the fourth quarter. North Carolina kicks a field goal with a minute to go to tie it at 35. No big deal. They outscored them 10 nothing. Well, NC State gets the ball back, goes three and out. UNC uses the two of their timeouts that they had left. NC State has to punt it with 13 seconds to go. Gio Bernard returns it 80 yards for a touchdown. If you have NC State plus seven and a half, you're fine, right? No, because UNC did come out to kick the extra point, but the holder bobbled the snap, so he just – boarded the play and threw it up and a guy on UNC caught it in the end zone and they won by eight. He had seven, so they won 18, nothing in the fourth quarter because of that. Um, but we'll start at the top of the bracket. If you ha- don't have it in front of you, go to my Twitter. It's pinned uh, the actual bracket. Um, but Belk Bowl beats La Tech FIU. I mean, the Belk Bowl with Duke and Cincy. Yeah. Uh, it's the most famous, one of the most famous college football bad beats, but uh, I think in general, yeah. when you're, I think in general, when you're holding a lead and you're the dog and you're in the opponent's red zone and there's no time left, for you not to cover a, a two-possession, I, I, it's just all-time legendary. I mean, there's a reason why David Cutcliffe is on the Bad Beats segment, you know, making that face. You know, I mean, that, that, it's an all-time legendary Bad Beat. And all you have to do is drop Belk Bowl at a bar. And, and, and you note this in the story. Everybody should go read the bracket, read the story. The fact that Belk Bowl is not sponsoring this bowl anymore in Charlotte is just – I mean, this bowl in general has been crazy. I mean, Virginia Tech didn't score, went into halftime. I had Val Tech in that game. I felt, oh, my it, God. I, I, I've never seen anything like this. 24 nothing at the half. About this bowl, I don't know what it is. I don't know who's picked it up or if it's been picked up yet, but the fact that it's not called the Belk Bowl anymore, it all starts in 2012. I mean, this, this is legendary. Go watch the clip, read the article. Every, every college football better knows about the Belk. Yep. Uh, the eight nine matchup that would play the Belk Bowl, as we both have the Belk Bowl moving on, is a matchup of safety mooses. So safety yep. bad beats. South Carolina Miss State Spurrier up four, laying three, with four seconds to go at his own nine. <laughs> calls timeout and says, you know, probably the smart move, but to take the to take the snap, run back out of bounds, and game was over. But they won by two lane three and then FAU Marshall is the lane game I actually did benefit from this one right this is the one I did benefit from in college football lane takes a safety um up eight I believe and they were laying seven and they won by six at the end um yeah maybe a smart move again but not for betters it was painful so but you have a good reason and I actually agree with you why you think the nine seed FAU Marshall should move on well, first off, I'd like to say that this is one of those instances where you always want to shop for the best number. And that's where something like the Action App can come in a huge help because this number it closed at six, but it was offered at four and a half. And there were shops that offered it at six and a half. So this safety was a really big deal. But the reason why the nine seed Florida Atlantic versus Marshall of 2017 is getting the pass is because it's one thing to lose like this, right? And and you and you you've you've grabbed the tweet that went on fire when it first came out, uh, the the video highlight of this happening. But Lane Kiffin acknowledging this, acknowledging the safety and the gambling aspect of it, and what the point spread was. I'm not saying Steve Spurrier doesn't bet from the other side, you know. I mean, from the eight, eight seed in here, but the fact that the gambling aspect and the point spread was acknowledged by Lane Kiffin on Twitter makes this just a, a, a win a win for me in this. I, you can't, I don't know if I can beat the Belk Bowl. I won't put it past the Belk. But the head coach acknowledging the point spread and taking the safety, electing to take the safety, amazing stuff. Yep, I agree. And I agree that we have to put the Belk Bowl through uh, over FAU Marshall, especially because some people did actually cover it. Uh, depending on your number. So Belk Bowl goes to the Sweet 16. Moving on to the second part of that pod. It's Stanford UCLA. I was on Stanford here. This is Josh Rosen uh, yep. for UCLA at midfield with like two seconds left getting sacked. Um, they were catching. But they had the lead. 
before yeah, all that happened. Up. Stanford took scored a touchdown in like 30 seconds, went right down the field to take the lead to go up by like two or three. UCLA gets the ball back, and then on like the last play, they get sacked. Solomon Thomas maybe set, yeah. re- picks it up and returns it yep. 50 yards as time expired. They went by nine, I think like 22-13. That was brutal. Then they're facing off 5-12. 5-12, always fascinating. The Alamo Bowl. This is double sorted. So I had uh, I had Oregon in this game, who was up thirty one nothing. Um, they were up. This is Alamo Bowl two thousand sixteen, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, January second, two thousand sixteen. Um, I had Oregon. They were up 31 nothing at the half, going bonkers, bonkers, look, rolling. You had the under, like, 73. Team's yep. up 31 nothing. It gets 31 points. So it's not like, hey, 73 is a lock, except if you're up 31 nothing. Like, in a blowout 31 nothing, the under is golden. Nope. TCU wins the second half 31 nothing. Oregon, by the way, in this game was minus one, I think, and I had them. Game ends up yep. going into – uh, triple overtime, um, and uh, TCU wins 47 uh, 41. Just vicious. So, the, picking that 5 12 is, is very difficult. What do you got there? I'm going to, so it's a personal thing for me why Stanford and UCLA is going to get it because, you know, Rosen and UCLA were up 13 to 9. And I had this bet. I was personally with my family, I was with my kids in Jerry World down in Cowboy Stadium watching. Texas A&M and Arkansas. I was in the fifth row in the end zone. And I was supposed to be with my family watching the Razorbacks while we were just getting diced up by Texas A&M up the gut. Brett Bielema didn't have an answer for it at all. But I had too much money on this game, this Stanford-UCLA game. I had UCLA plus three and a half. And they were up 13 to nine. And in under two minutes, had blown everything. And that strip six of Rosen I, I, I mean, the exact thing was I had my phone right here. I was streaming it with a Razorback game on Cow, in Cowboy Stadium in front of me. I remember holding down the button, asked, being asked to turn the iPhone off, swipe the iPhone off, and just dropped it. And then I didn't touch the phone for 30 minutes. I didn't touch it. I didn't speak. I didn't speak for 24 hours. I wanted to quit gambling. And I think that's the power of some of these beats, some of these bad beats. If you're going to advance teams in this bracket – I think it needs to have a, like, a, a, such an impact on you that you say, that was such a bad beat. I don't want to gamble ever again. Like, I, I just can't. I don't have the stomach for it. This hurts too much. I can't talk about it. You wake up the next day, and you're still hurting. It's in your nightmares. And that was what this Stanford-UCLA game was. I had too much invested in it. I was in front of my family and had to keep quiet about it. I wanted to throw my iPhone onto the, onto the field. Um, it, personally, it was one of the worst beats. I mean, as a five seed, I understand why it's a five seed. It's some major heavy hitters in this, in, in this college football bracket. But for me, it's going to be Stanford UCLA moving on. Yep. I agree with you. The, the kicker here is that Stanford only had six points, um, the, in, <laughs> the first three quarters and they couldn't do anything. And Ryan Burns, their quarterback had like, <sighs> he went, he went, he went down the field in, in like a minute literally a minute to score a touchdown. And he threw for like 70 yards on the drive before that drive. He had 60 total yards passing and looked awful. And our Sega white side caught like a jump ball. A couple, there was a couple jump balls. That was just brutal. Um, so I agree. I kept the saying it's dead torture, but uh, I thought, I thought when Rosen lost, I was like, it's dead. The ball's dead. It's, it's dead. Like I, no, I, if you look at the video, like I think all of UCLA doesn't even know there's a live ball on the ground. Yeah. Just absolutely brutal. Um, yeah, and Stanford fumbled it. Um, like, they fumbled a punt. And, like, so, yeah, there was a – let me see. Yeah, just – there were so many things in that fourth quarter. Just – I can't even look at it. Yeah, I'm moving on Stanford as well. Um, the next – and then, all right, so Stanford – and then the, the next, the bottom half is Ohio State Northwestern. Some people say they could be a one or two, but there's so many bad beats. Ohio State Northwestern is the famous Brent Musburger call. You can find it where he basically loses a bet while calling the game. Um, and he, let's see, you can hear him. Ready? Um, let's 
Let's see if I can find this clip. Here we go. Here, uh, Evan, play this the sound of this. It's Mesperger lose better on air. I'm gonna play it for you, Colin. Ready? Okay. So that's that's Musburger losing a bet live on air. I lost that too. Basically, Northwestern were catching what I think seven or something, and they there was no time left. They had the ball third and eighteen. There was one second left. They snap it. It goes back in the end zone, and they, you know the whole thing. And then Ohio, they almost recovered in the end zone, which would have been fine, but it slipped out, and then Ohio State recovers it with no time left for. I thought they went 40 to 30. Uh, that these, was brutal. These end zone um, recoveries, and, these end zone recoveries are so terrible. Yeah. I, I, and I also had the 13 seed Stanford USC, which back in 2011, I believe it was Halloween. I remember I was like dressed up somewhere at a party, but I left it mm-hmm. to go watch. I went and found a TV to watch this game and went to triple overtime. I'm, I have USC plus seven and a half and Stanford – It goes to triple overtime. Stanford scores a touchdown. They get the ball first in triple overtime and gets the two. So they go up eight. And then USC gets the ball, and they go down to the one-yard line, and they hand it off, and he fumbles it into the end zone, and Stanford recovers it. (laughs) Uh, But I got to go Ohio State Northwestern. That was – I mean, it's it's just the – in the college football world, that's one of the most famous bad beats. And there's just so many bad ones. At fours, it's crazy. I I feel – Stanford USC is a horrible beat, but I got to advance Ohio State Northwestern. What do you got? I agree with you completely, and this is a good time for us to mention that I don't remember when overtime rules went into effect that in the third overtime that you have to go for two, but we should go ahead and mention that we have new overtime rules where in the fifth overtime, it's only two-point conversions and only counts as two points, but last year, all of 2019, that went into effect. We didn't have one-point spread affected, but it's coming. You and I both know. Someone's going to have a bad beat based upon a five overtime, two point conversion that only counts as two points, no more six point uh, touchdowns. So yeah, definitely moving on Ohio state uh, Northwestern uh, over the Stanford USC with the, with the eight points there in overtime. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to our first five overtime, bad beat, two point conversion. I'll be on it. I'll be on the wrong side of it. Don't worry. Um, and then Ohio state Northwestern versus Stanford UCLA. I mean, those are very similar. Um, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna have an upset because of the way Stanford, you know, took the lead late. Their offense was anemic, and then it was a longer return. Um, I know Ohio State Northwestern is as bad as it gets. I was on Northwestern; it was right. so bad. But I was also on Stanford. Uh, I'm having the five move on, but it still can't compete with the Belk Bowl. So I have the Belk going to the Elite Eight. How do you have the region playing out? I, I also am, I'm going to agree with you that we're going to move on UCLA and Stanford. And the reason is because this is the same standard that I have for the Belk Bowl. You have a dog with a lead extremely late. And not only did they not win, they didn't cover. So, I mean, that, that for me alone, I think what makes Ohio State Northwestern so famous, and it is famous and it's, it's worth all of its credit, is the Musburger call. I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, it, it is a bad beat. It, it deserves to be a four seed. It is legendary. But the Musburger call, I think, elevated it up there. But from an actual technical standpoint, the Belk Bowl and then our five seed here are two teams that, uh, you know, had the lead uh, very late and not only just didn't win, they didn't cover as dogs. So, yeah, I'm going to move them forward, but I'm going to go with the Belk Bowl to win the top half of the bracket. Yeah. Um now again, this isn't this is personal. It's just like the fast food. It's like what impacts you, what what hurt you the most. So um, there's no right, right or wrong answer. Um, th- going to the bottom half of the bracket, there's two Auburn games. Auburn Ole Miss versus this is six eleven versus the Prayer Jordan Hare. Auburn Ole Miss Ole Miss was minus one. They were going. They were down four. They were going into score. They were going to uh, presumably win the game. And Treadwell at the one yard line looks like he's just going to go in for an easy touchdown. Gets grabbed from the back, breaks his leg at like the one inch yard line. So he drops the ball. Auburn picks it up in the end zone and then seals the win um, versus, and I was on that one. I was also on Georgia against Auburn. Uh, Auburn, this is the prayer, Jordan Hare. Auburn was, Georgia was catching three 
and or three, three and a half. They were up by like two. And it was fourth and 18 with 30 seconds to go for Auburn. And they had a quarterback who couldn't complete a forward pass. So he just chucked it up in the air. And it was obviously like the worst throw you've ever seen, but it hits off of like a helmet and bounces up right into the guy's hands and he goes all the way. Um, I, that was awful. I have the 11 beating the six. I was on both of them, both on the wrong side of uh, betting against Auburn. But prayer Jordan Hare, uh, I think, beats the six here. You? Yeah, prayer Jordan Hare. I've never seen a play like that in my entire life. It was – it, it's one of those moments that left me completely speechless. The fact that it, it, it turned tickets around, you know, instantly with that play uh, is amazing. And then from a personal level, like Gus Malzahn called that play, he dubbed it Little Rock. Uh, he stated that it is something that he drew up in 1998 while coaching at Shiloh Christian School in uh, Springdale, Arkansas, uh, something that he drew up in the state playoffs. So this one hits like really close to home. The play involved uh, has some ties back to my home, back to my home area. So uh, I'm definitely going to put in uh, the Jordan Hare, but uh, I, I still that that game was an all timer. And Auburn, Auburn and Stanford. Just as a side note, they show up way too much, way too much. It's deserved, but man, Auburn and Stanford, luck box shit all over this bracket. Yep. Um, all right. Now moving on to who they will face. You had the Bahamas Bowl in 2014. Also, this is Western Michigan, Western Kentucky, Central Michigan. Western Kentucky was minus two and a half. They were up 49-14 in the middle of the third quarter. 49-14, you're up 35, laying two and a half. Central Michigan then comes all the way back and scores. They, so you outscored them 34 nothing in the fourth quarter. They're up 49-14 <laughs> in the fourth quarter. Central Michigan scored 34 points in the fourth quarter, including one of the most ridiculous touchdowns you'll ever see as time expired. And I think Western Kentucky opened at two and a half. They closed at three and a half. But then you're like, all right, if you have Western Kentucky, you're shocked, stunned. And um, you can say, all right, now we're going to go to overtime. Nope. Central Michigan goes up, lines up for two, as they probably should have in a bowl. And you know that you have no way to win now, um, unless there was like an offensive penalty and then they have to try and kick it or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, then they only won by one. So, on top of all that, what makes that even more sour is that the team that lost you money – if you bet on Western Kentucky, then won the game outright by one after giving up 34 on answer. Just you, you want them to lose at that point, and then they stop them on the two point conversion. They take on Maryland NC State. This is a game, talk about blown lead. This is a blown lead matchup. NC State at Maryland was catching 12. They led 45 14 in the third, midway through the third quarter. 45 14, they're up by 31. They're catching 12. NC State comes all the way back, ties it at 45. Fine. It's, there's a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter. You're still catching 12. NC State then scores a touchdown. They go up 52-45. There's like 30 seconds left. Guess what? Maryland throws a pick six. NC State wins by 14. Um, they scored 45 unanswered points. So uh, I think the pain of it being a bowl, the daytime, a lot more people bet on it. You got to move on the bomb as well. But Maryland NC State was brutal. Um, and then, look, uh, the prayer Jordan Hare was so improbable, that throw. Um, but I still have to put the Bahamas Bowl through to the Sweet 16. What do you got on that Bahamas Bowl, Maryland, NC State, and who are you putting through the Sweet 16? The Bahamas Bowl is going to win this one because the deficit was bigger. The 49-14 lead was bigger than the, uh, than the Maryland, NC State, the 27-point halftime lead, second half. Uh, lead so yeah, it's 49 14 versus 45 14 yeah but and it's yeah, more marquee so, it's a bowl game Is yeah that, I think it was a new I mean, kick yeah you had jeff brom for western kentucky and you got a mac team in there with central michigan so uh you know that's just one of that's like god i miss betting so i like i miss betting i miss sports so much just to be gifted a western kentucky central michigan game like during the day in christmas season is just is just gold mine um but yeah jordan Hare is going to advance on for me over that yeah, you're right. I'm thinking about my own pain, too. I'm going to have the 11 moving on. Um, in the bottom half, you have a 7-10. Two more Stanford games. Stanford-Northwestern. We've This was last year. We've seen this before. Northwestern-Stanford. <laughs> a, a fumble last play of the game. You actually had Stanford. I had Northwestern. I blah, blah, blah. We've seen Stanford do that. Then Oregon-Stanford, the 10 seed. I'm going to have that moving on. The amount of things that had to happen. Oregon was about to go up 21 at the goal line. There was a fumble. Stanford, like, returned at 90 yards. Oregon then, you know, blow, blows this big lead. 
and then they have the game sealed up. They get a first down, and they probably could have taken knees or just. But yep. they end up running the ball, and the guy reaches for it, and <laughs> um, he fumbles it. Stanford gets the ball, ties it, ends up winning in uh, overtime. That was vicious. That's smooth. And between those two Stanford games, I had both on the wrong side of both. Uh, I'm moving on to Oregon Stanford. That was so painful. I remember being on Twitter for that. Yep. Oh my God. Uh, so what do you got? Well, I, I'm going to go with 10 Oregon Stanford, uh, the 10 seed here. Uh, you and I were both on this together. Uh, I was on the right side uh, of the other game, but uh, you know, this one was painful from the perspective that you and I talked on the podcast that it was that, that taking uh, Oregon in this spot was our biggest bet of the week. And I could say financially, it was the biggest bet of the week for me. And I felt extremely confident going into this game. Yeah, uh, and it was, it was sealed. It was wrapped up. And I think what sucks about this even more is just Mario Cristobal shitty coaching. I mean, this game had so much impact that I still don't trust him to today. The second the Rose Bowl line came out between Wisconsin and Oregon, I was all over Wisconsin. There's a Cristobal thing with him where I just don't trust him as a head coach. And maybe I've got to get over the stigma. And it comes from this game where they could have taken knees at Oregon and Stanford. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it goes back that far for me. Um, I think the Twitter thing that the, I, I did a little 30 minute thing where I, I just put the phone down. Like when, when I get so upset over a game like this, I just put the phone down, but you and I had to podcast the next day and we had this whole conversation. It's like, we have so many people jump at us when one of these games happens like this, like, Oh, you were wrong. Oh, I told you. Oh, I, what did you tell us? Like you really planned on this happening that his knee wasn't going to go down, that they were going to go for it, that they weren't going to just take knees. Like you plan that. What do you want us to do? You just want to say we fucked up. We made a bad pick. Like, are we supposed to be on? Tw- I'm not hiding from anybody. I, I just, I lost. What do you want me to tweet out to satisfy the people that go against us and want to rub it in our face? The second this stuff happens, you and I had a whole podcast about that, about how people just love to jump in our mentions and shit right after one of these bad beats happen. And this was a big one. This 10 seed, this Oregon Stanford. Yep. Um, I agree. Oregon Stanford moves on. The, and the, 215 matchup, USC Arizona State. That's 1996 overtime game. The only time in college football history where a team catching seven or more didn't cover in overtime. Arizona State went up seven, and then USC fumbled it. it you can go on the post on actionnetwork.com. You'll see the video. And then Arizona State scooped it and went 90 yards and won by 13. They're playing the 15 seed, Air Force Colorado State. This is last year. Air Force was up 14 so many times, and then. Uh, they ended up throwing a – they were catching 10 and a half. They ended up getting down seven. Then they completed all these passes to keep the drive alive, and they got down to the one. And they ended up throwing a pick six, a 99-yard pick six. And uh, Air Force covered the fifth. I know the, the two-seed circumstances of it are one of the worst beats ever, but it was 1996. I wasn't betting then. Uh, I was 10 years old. Um, so uh, I, I didn't have a bet on it. Air Force, Colorado State capped off the wor- single worst betting day I've had in 10 plus years. Um, I had an O for day back in college, uh, in college football once. Um, but that was so brutal. I was just defeated. That game just defeated me. So I had the 15 seed moving on. Um, and both, both of those, I remember the feeling of that Oregon state and air force Colorado state, both very similar, but I had a lot more on Oregon Stanford and it was a, it was just – I was a lot more confident in it, and it was a – it was just a – it was such a gut punch, whereas the other one, Air Force Colorado State, even though it was one of my worst days ever, at that point I was – it was a gut punch, but I was just laughing, like, of course, like the, just hysterically evil laughing. So I have Oregon – Stanford moving on, and then I have Oregon – Stanford beating prayer at Jordan Hare – and then I have Oregon State, Oregon Stanford against Belk Bowl, and then I have Belk Bowl. I can't dethrone the Belk Bowl. Going to the Final Four out of the college football. So how do you see that bottom playing out, and then who do you have going to the Final Four? What's not mentioned in the notes and what's not mentioned in the video clip of the 15-seed Air Force and Colorado State is that Air Force was covering this game most of the game and specifically really late in the fourth quarter on their own 22 – Troy Calhoun decided to go for it on fourth down. It's like fourth and 10. It's like fourth and eight. I have to go look it up. But there's no reason he should have been going for it on fourth down on his own 22 with a lead big enough to cover the spread. And he didn't punt it. He went for it. Yep. Yep. It is 
immediately put Colorado State in, in the in the green zone, in the red zone. What are you doing? Like, do you have money on the other side? I can't technically ask that question. But why are you not punting on fourth and whatever on your own 22 with this huge of a lead? All right. So on principle alone, the two seed has to go through. But I'm completely in agreement with you. Oregon Stanford, our big loss for 2018. That's going to move on over the prayer of Jordan Hare. And the Belk Bowl reigns supreme. We're going to take chalk in this bracket. Belk Bowl is my pick. Now, I'm, I love college football more than all the other regions. I love MLB and I love NFL and I don't watch a lot of NBA. But I'm confident in my sweet spot of college football of taking the Belk Bowl into the Final Four and doing some damage against the other sports. I'm with you. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, thanks for listening. Everyone hang in there. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about another region. And um, stay safe and stay sane. And we'll catch you all later. Cheers. Peace out.